feels quite like last year, but I feel like I've risen from the dead. <laughs> it's so traumatic because honestly I have like whilst I've been unwell, it hasn't been that bad, but it has been bad in the sense of like not being able to move. So fatigued, which just very much reminded me of COVID, but I don't think I had COVID, but who knows at this stage, I have had COVID twice. Um, so having it a third time, maybe it just runs through my body a little differently. It very much felt like a cold. I am a bit still congested, which you can probably hear. But honestly, <laughs> I haven't left my flat in like three days. And I just moved in and it's like I moved in and then it hit me. Um, and I was like still working and then I just was like, I actively cannot work actually. Um, so that's been fun. What I have been doing in the moments of like being present is reading. Um, so I'm going to talk about those. So a book that I started maybe at the end of Jan and then finished um, just at the beginning of February is this, which is the Copenhagen Trilogy by Tove, I don't know, I should have googled her to say that because her name is Dutch I believe. Um, and this is a collection of three books. I actually think the first one might be a novella, it's quite small. Um, and I know I spoke about this in some video, maybe it was the January reading vlog, which still hasn't gone up, um, but it's partially edited. But, yes, at that time I was saying I didn't know if this was fiction or non-fiction. It is non-fiction and it is about the author's life. Um, so, as you can see from the title, Childhood, we're talking about her childhood and her upbringing in like a working class neighbourhood in Copenhagen. Yes. And then Youth talks about when she's like 14 to, I don't know, a certain point her age and just um, what life was like for her then um, and then Dependency talks about like her like in her early 20s and it's so weird when you're reading it because sometimes I was like are these people 20 because they seem and sound so much older well not sound but it's just the things that they're doing in their life you would think that they were so much older so it talks about you know being a young woman dating motherhood and then eventually addiction um, and I actually thought this was absolutely stunning. Um, I really liked her writing and her insights, especially in childhood, because she talks a lot about, you know, what it's like growing up in a kind of unhappy environment. But her kind of thoughts or kind of um, observations of like other people when they're talking about childhood or talking about her childhood, she talks about these things that you only kind of feel or notice about childhood or about other people if you've had a bad childhood if you've had kind of like I guess in her case like a mother who it felt like didn't really want to be a mum um, and it was just quite oppressive it's the things that you notice about other people and what really struck me in this book when I was reading it especially in the childhood section was the amount of people that told her she was ugly and it's just like grown women and I just I really don't understand when a grown woman would take the time to comment on like a child, um, a child's appearance. It's bizarre to me that so many people would sit there and comment on her appearance. Like, you know, kids in school, I get it. Like, kids are horrible, they can be horrible, all those sorts of things. But it really struck me the amount of, you know, grown adults, and especially in childhood and youth, who were saying it to her. And when I like Googled a picture of her, because there's a picture of her in the back, but that's her, and when she's probably in like her 50s maybe, she um, ended her life, I think she was 56. So I just wanted to see what she looked like when she was young and I was like, she's a pretty girl to me, like, you know? So it's just so interesting, like, it's just so, so much, like, hatred from people. But anyway, like I said, this chronicles her time, that time in her life, and the large theme that's running through this is the fact that she wants to be a writer, she wants to be a poet, so it is about, like, her, you know, crafting poetry and how she comes to that, how she comes to literature, how she comes to crafting words, and what she's told as, like, a working class woman about, like, what can actually be the reality of her career being a woman. And it's nice, she goes on to be a very successful poet, um, and I feel like, uh, maybe because obviously like it's her life and she, this is a translation, but I feel like it was very simplified how like her kind of career trajectory, which I imagine it actually wasn't, but maybe with the purpose of this book and because it wasn't about becoming a poet, it was more about recounting her life, she decided not to really dive into the ins and outs of that and obviously back then there were probably very few publishing houses as well, so you know, take that into consideration. But what I liked about this, and I did a little bit of research about this in terms of like the final um, book, which is Dependency, in the Dutch, the title for it means either gift or poison. And this section talks about basically marriage and her addiction to 
I think it's a drug called Demerol and then it kind of just becomes, I think it's any kind of barbiturates essentially. Um, and I found that a very like interesting choice of words and you know she's clearly done it on purpose because it is about like whether <laughs> marriage was a gift to her or a poison. She ended up having four husbands <laughs> and I think in youth, the end of youth, beginning of youth or yeah I think it's the beginning of youth or end of, I can't remember, um, she is like I don't know, 18, 20 and married to this man who is like 50. Like the man is older than her mum. <laughs> I'm just so surprised that anyone let this happen. But it is that kind of security for people, especially working class kids, that parents seem to think that if you're married, you have that security and your future is fine. Um, and then she kind of marries another man who is the fave for me, I think, <laughs> out of all the men she's kind of chosen, perhaps the later one, but we don't really get to find out what life was like with him um and that's where she kind of has her first kid um and then the third husband is the one that essentially gets her addicted but you know he didn't know in, in the beginning and it was very interesting and very sad to see her descent into that um especially because you kind of i don't know you're with her in this time where she's really kind of like having a budding career whilst i guess still navigating like friendship and then being a young mother and things like that and i guess at that time they didn't really think of themselves as young mums um and then the addiction comes in and it's just it just makes you feel very sad. Um, so that was that, very enjoyable. Then I started to read Consent, which is a book that I took out of the library because it has all I found in my Amazon because it has the same name as another book called Consent that I wanted to read. I actually stopped reading this at about page like 150 or something. It was so boring, so uninteresting, so stupid. This is a book about a man who begins stalking women. I feel like it is only women because I never hear him talk about stalking any men. Um, and I think, <laughs> um, you know, he talks to us about his kind of how he got into it. Um, and then there's a circumstance with this one woman named Frances and there's this whole thing happening at her work. Someone has sent an anonymous email about like kind of her work practices and like whether she's a good employee and just like she's clocking in many more hours than she's actually working. And that begins like an investigation for her. And this guy kind of inserts himself into her life in the way that, you know, she goes to a cafe and then like he's there and they end up meeting and talking. But, you know, there are a lot of situ situations that he's essentially engineered. And so you kind of follow him whilst he kind of like gets his way into her house and things like that. For me, the point in which this book just became ridiculous was a point in which I felt like just a senseless kind of acted occurred where it's just like I don't really think that this actually makes a lot of sense um because I'm not sure why one would do this so first there is a, a scene where you know the guy kind of like accidentally pushes someone in front of a moving train and this guy dies and that I could kind of you know I say excuse because it, it kind of seemed like a spur of the moment thing um but then the second bit, I was just like, I don't really understand why you're doing this and I was just like this book is actually very boring very dull like I just don't feel like you don't have that thrill of, you know, you're working with someone who is a stalker and is, is a bit unhinged. You're just a bit bored by the whole thing. So I did flick to the end to just kind of see what happens. And I just felt like, yeah, <laughs> I'm glad I've decided to stop reading this because this is, this is none of this is interesting. Like, I don't think it even builds to anything interesting in the end. So that was my first DNF of the year. So the final book that I read and finished yesterday is Dello Words Destiny. Um, again, one that I really enjoyed. since I last filmed um, but I wanted to show well I, yeah I wanted to show something that I got through from the Scottish Poetry Library even though I still owe them two books but that's more than sense but you know <laughs> oh it came with a bookmark Ooh, I have several bookmarks now it's the Stanza um, Poetry Festival which is in St Andrews I really debated going to this because um, it's at the beginning of March there is a podcast host Patrick Otuma 
who hosts the Poetry Unbound podcast. I love his voice. And he's going to be at the festival doing a live recording of the podcast. And honestly, that was the one convincing factor, but I'm just like, realistically, I can't afford it, right? It's like, I could, but then it was just, with all the moving costs, I'm just like, I, I don't want to put myself further. So I've decided to not go, even though I'm like, mm. But I did get this from the Scottish Poetry Library. So this is Don't Read Poetry, and this is about like how to read poems, basically. I was just really inspired after I read the um, a Poetry Handbook by Mary Oliver. Um, so, and then this actually came up in my recommendations on Storygraph. So that's really nice because I think it is, you know, learning more and more about like what I'm reading or trying to like recommend me things along the same vein in a way that I just don't feel like Amazon, like well, Goodreads does, you know? And then something else that I got through the post, but I have already finished reading, I finished reading it yesterday, is How to Solve Your Own Murder. Um, this comes out next month, um, but I think it's an imprint of Hachette, and Hachette is like the wider parent company that I worked for, so I was able to get approved for this. I liked this, I ended up giving it three stars, I thought it was really clever. Um, it is about a woman whose great aunt thinks that she'll be murdered because of a fortune that was told, um, and then yeah, she ends up being found murdered, and then it's about investigating that murder. So that's that. But what I also did the other day, so for once in my life, my library stack of books was down to like three books. It was looking slim, it was looking good. I was like, yes. Um, and then I went to the library and collected these books because they were all waiting for me to be picked up, waiting for to be picked up. So the first is Severance. I'm not gonna go through all of them and talk through all of them because this video will be super long. But the first is Severance. This has been on my um, list for a very, very long time and actually also kind of I've been on the list for this for a long time. I think if, I don't know, if one person had it, we're just not bring, bringing it back. So there's that. There's the bread, the devil need. Again, something that's been on my list for a very long time. I actually thought the reservation was gonna get canceled, but it seems the person returned the book. So that's another one. Uh, the Maid, which is, I believe, a detective. Yeah, this is like a detective um, kind of mystery series, sorry, of a maid who finds like a dead body in one of the rooms that she's cleaning. Uh, then there's Carla by Colin Walsh. Again, this is one of the books that I heard about on that article that I spoke about in my last reading vlog, I believe. Um, and this finally came through. I actually heard Mercedes talk about this in her one of her recent kind of videos. And it actually made me think that I wouldn't like this book based on what she was saying. I was like, that doesn't sound interesting to me at all. But the way it was described in that article was like a little, little bit different to make me think that maybe I would, but I'm willing to give it a try. But now I'm, I'm having second thoughts. And then finally I have Dawn by Octavia E. Butler. Um, I was talking with a friend like last month and I don't know how we got onto this stuff, but we were talking about, I've completely forgotten her name, the author that does the Song of Solomon, or how have I forgotten her name? Toni Morrison, obviously. Um, and then he mentioned like Octavia E. Butler and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> yes, read her, she is amazing. Told him all about the Pattern Master series um, and then was like, yeah, I forgot that I actually wanted to check out the rest of her books. So of course, went onto that library website as fast as I could and they have so many of her books. So I thought I would start with this because this was the first one that came through. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of fiction books. So these are all fiction books, that's really nice. I'm still reading that um, Telomere Effect as my non-fiction, but as of yesterday, well, as of today, I have the free reign to pick a new fiction book, which is very, very exciting. It's very exciting to also be at the end of the week. I've had an, actually, yeah, I've had, I've had a good working week is what I'll say, <laughs> um, but yeah. to the end of another week and I haven't vlogged at all during that week but I wanted to vlog now because tomorrow I'm getting my hair done so I'll look different but also just only organized like this week note to yourself do check your Twitter DMs um, you're gonna see well hopefully I'll do a bit of filming but if not no I think I will hopefully that everyone will be okay with being filmed but you will see some YouTube faces on my YouTube so yeah you'll still be seeing them on youtube or whatever but um yes i am going to meet two youtubers i won't say who you would just see them in the next clip but that's just so exciting i actually cannot believe i'm going to meet them because one of them is flying over from the us obviously not specifically to meet me um 
but how exciting and obviously we're going to be doing bookish things uh, which involves going to Waterstones um, I would have loved to have gone to some of the kind of like charity bookshops or like secondhand bookshops in Glasgow but they don't open on a Sunday um, but yes I just wanted to say that uh, and then yeah I guess I'll just very briefly talk about what I'm reading at the moment I've got like seven books on the go so I am going to be very brief I started reading this which is The Body Code um, won't say anything else about it at the moment it's just keeping I'm keeping an open mind and I picked this up again I'm sure I picked it up last year and I picked it up again just today actually I had a very bad sinus headache today um, so I haven't been able to do much but this is hitting differently now <laughs> I remember liking it at the time but at the moment it's hitting differently really I was gonna say I was really interrupted but it's actually my Friday takeaway which I'm so excited for because I've had one meal today and I just couldn't bring it in me to make another meal because <laughs> I've just been in so much pain all day but I'm gonna show you the pizza which hopefully is gonna taste good I've not ordered from this place before and it has to be my last takeaway from my paycheck because Gladly cannot keep affording it's not you keep having takeaways, you know? Okay, I sampled that pizza and it is very, very good. Not as good, obviously, as my favourite pizza place, but my favourite pizza place does not deliver. Um, and probably doesn't even do takeaways anymore either because they have one pizza oven. I think I was actually talking about this book, but yeah, I was just saying it hits differently now. Carla, I started this yesterday. Um, and I've only read, God, how far am I? Oh, there's a bookmark in here. Oh, someone's probably left it. Uh, I am on page 24. So that far into it, I'm not gonna lie. Already I feel like I should just DNF this. Not because it's bad or anything like that, but it's just not really the kind of book I'm interested in. It's just going to be about these people in their small town in Ireland. But I think um, when I mentioned that article, I'm not sure if I ever linked it in that video, but it was to do with the fact um, of the disappearance of a girl and that kind of mystery aspect. So maybe I'll keep on reading and we'll see. This I have been reading for ages. Like the, I marked it on my Goodreads. The day that I kind of like started it on my Goodreads is the only time I've ever picked it up. I will pick it up at some point because I did like it, but I was only like, I've only read like four pages. And I'm working through this black book, which I mentioned in my kind of non-fiction reads for 2024. And then I've also started listening to two audiobooks. Well, I say two. This book I'm also listening to an audio, so I'm continuing to listen to that. But I've also started listening to an audiobook. I can't remember exactly the name. It's like something like, it's been a very good day. And it's about a woman, like, microdosing LSD. She is the wife of someone who is apparently someone super, like, kind of famous in media or something like that. Um... But that's where I was reading. But I'm so excited for Sunday, so yes, yeah, see you, see you then. Hey guys, I am here to wrap up the vlog. I, so I've kind of like edited the vlog already and there are two things I want to wrap up. In one of the clips I showed myself at the Poirot and me and that was um, going to see David Suchet talk about, you know, his time as Poirot but also some of the acting things that he did or has done, right? Um, and that was so cool. The fire alarm actually went off before we started and I was like, what's going on here? Is this part of the show? Absolutely not. They said it was someone like baby in the toilets. And the second is, I hope you managed to spot um, who I met off of YouTube. Um, and there was also Heather, who um, I wasn't aware of before. 
so Helen was there as well so it was myself Margaret and Camilla um, and it was just really nice to meet them and chat and just chat about books in real life and it was a really really lovely evening um, as an evening afternoon so that was all good fun um, but yeah I just wanted to wrap up the vlog and I thought I would do the same thing that I did last year which last year <laughs> last month and just say talk about the books very very briefly um, and just give you a roundup of what February looked like. So in February I ended up reading seven books and I will put the story graphs things like here and oh yeah yes I got my head in. Um, so I ended up reading seven books that translates to 1991 pages and also because I managed to listen to um, some audiobooks there's also 2.6 hours worth of audiobooks there. I'll put the mood thing up here on this side even though you guys if you've watched my sort of like reading stats of 2023, it's not something I really bother with. Looking at the split, I read four fiction books and four, four, three non-fiction books. And then I'll put here on the screen the genres that they're in because the highest is contemporary, which I love to see. I looked at the books that were there and I was like, yes, they are all contemporary books, all like different from each other. So in terms of my overall rating for February, again, I'll put it here. Um, I My overall rating is 2.93 stars. I gave one book 1.5 stars, and we'll see what that is on the screen, but that was a poetry collection, wasn't my favourite. I gave another book 2 stars, which I would like to talk a little bit more on, um, but I won't do it here, but, hmm, I have thoughts. I gave two books 3 stars, they were okay. I spoke about one of them earlier in the vlog, which is The How to Sol Solve Your Own Murder. I gave two books 3.5 stars, and one of them is Dele Bed's Destiny. I cut off the bit where I started talking about the book because it just ended up being super long in my vlog. And then the book that got the highest rating was the book called The Bread the Devil Need. <laughs> I have many thoughts on this book, but I don't think I can articulate them properly. But this book is intense. It was really good. And it's written in like a Trinidadian dialect as well. I freaking loved it. <laughs> I thought it made everything sound so funny. <laughs> Just like when she talked about really simple things, it sounded hilarious. But this is a book about like domestic violence, trauma, childhood trauma. Oh my God. Trigger warnings for this book. It's, the book has incest. Oh, guys. <laughs> but that is February done. No five star read in February, but hopefully in March I'll see a five star read. I should also mention there is a book that I have stopped reading for the time being and that is Carla by Colin Walsh and I simply stopped reading that because I had a whole bunch of books that I need to return to the library and that book was like not renew re <laughs> that book wasn't renewable um, and there was another book that I had that also wasn't renewable which now it is um, and I just didn't want to hold on to it especially because I was like I don't actually think I'm going to read it at the speed I wasn't enjoying it that much so I was like I'm not really going to read it at fast speed and there are other things that I could read so I've taken it back to the library and I put myself back on the reservation list for it so I'll get it through another time um but yeah we are in March so I'm just going to say goodbye in this vlog and then start my March vlog sometime during the week but thank you for watching this vlog and yeah here's to a well February was really nice but obviously here's to not feeling ill at the beginning of the month and yeah thank you very much for watching this video bye